This is a difficult video because I, I get it. I get it. I get why no one wants to work anymore, right? I, I, and I would say that it's even further than that. I would say that no one wants to learn anymore. And then also that the type of work that people do, if they can somehow sense that something automated is coming, then their quality of work changes because they're like, what's the fucking point, right? Like you can't argue that the cost of labor is the biggest expense in a business, right? One of the biggest expenses. And I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you now that like, I totally understand why no one wants to work anymore. However, it's not gonna solve any problems if everybody just stops working like right now, like w th things still need to be done. <laughs> so is this a paradigm shift? Yes. Is this a turning point? Yes. Is this an inflection point? Yes. Let me just do some things right now. I'm just going to spitball a little bit here. I'm going to be like, how do these words feel? Employee. Employer. Okay? First, I'm going to imagine that somebody out there right now feels like there's some ownership. Am I right? Okay. So this is work language. This is what people use, right? Let me guess. It's another good one here. Does that look familiar, right? Employee, employer, staff, and then like owner, right? Nowhere in here do you see team, which is what I would consider the forward words, right? So let's say team, okay? I would say that these are words also that you hire, how does that one feel? That one feels like, is someone buying you? Is someone buying you when they're hiring you? Is that, is that what that looks like or feels like, right? I would imagine that if you were to say onboarding, right? So these words put business in a strange place because who wants to work for anybody that uses these words. Because they're already promoting some sort of archaic culture inside their business that isn't forward thinking at all. And usually, which is why I'm gonna say this, this is gonna be a little bit all over the place, but I have to get this out there. I've been trying to do this for a while. These things, you know, totally change the way that the business, the people think inside the business and who wants to work for you, okay? so. Fuck this automation stuff first, okay? You have to correct the language you're promoting inside your institution or your organization so that it doesn't sound like ownership, okay? That's first. And then like, you, what you're doing here, you probably have silo-based communication and not team, right? So like, you wanna get from silo to team, you gotta change all of it. This is just, this is just words, right? They, they, this is just words, that's where you start. Okay, now that you have that idea, you, there is a way to navigate these waters as an owner of a business. There's a way to navigate these waters so that people will still want to work for you. It's not impossible. Okay, obviously you want to involve their relationship with automation or automatic technologies, right? That's what you do. It's an educational journey for everybody. Right? The tools keep coming out. There's an opportunity. Every single new technology has an opportunity where you learn it and it makes the experience better for your team. Okay? For your team. For you and your team. For the whole institution. You can include yourself in the team. You are the team. You are part of the team. Right? So this is like, I can come at it different ways, but there is 100% a way to evolve in business so that work is still something that is not completely replaced by automation 
and it's human work and people enjoy it, okay? Instead of it being why I think they don't want to work, which is very, very, it's a slippery slope, man. It's a slippery slope. You want to know why they don't want to work? Do you want to know why certain people, other than what I just said here, which is the way you phrase things and you talk about buying human time, but you don't say it that way. It's the same reason why if I'm talking to an owner and they skirt around the, the money word, like the, the green greed word, like they'll be like, oh, revenue and profits and revenue, and I like stop them dead. And I go, hold on a second here. Are you talking about money? <laughs> Oh, I can't talk about that. Not No, because that would make me greedy. And I'm like, well, business does require revenue <laughs> which, and profit. But if you're, if you're hiding inside those words, then you're not really, you know, understanding why people hate working for you. It's because it's the same reason why no one talks about their salary, right? Oh, that's private. Here's a little story. Uh, it doesn't matter how... If I was to build a business in the past, if I was to build a business and I put a server, a local server, in a closet, let's say, back in the day, you know the owners of those businesses would only be concerned about the QuickBooks password security. You know, not so much files because they probably weren't smart enough to store it on a shared folder. They were in the back in the day, they were probably staring at storing it on their computer because they were concerned about that privacy, but we won't even go there. But because like if someone could open up QuickBooks with an administrative password, they could see what everybody was being paid, right? Whoa, the oil business is gonna fall apart. <laughs> oh no. Everybody gets to know that everybody negotiated their different salaries, and so the ones that are being paid less just didn't negotiate well. Like, obviously, that's what that is, or the owner doesn't want to create some sort of mutiny. Well, guess what? The mutiny is here now, okay? And it's a mass exodus because there's no reason to work for institutions that aren't thinking about the team. And it's selfish. If I hear a business owner say I in a sentence that should be we, you know, and there's another one, right, I and we, then I automatically know that that business isn't going to succeed. Succeed When they want biz people, good people, to be interested in working in that business, right? It's hard to good, find good people and keep them. No shit, okay? Because, like, if they're in some sort of circumstance where, you know, let's imagine there was a pandemic, and let's imagine that everybody had to stay home anyway, okay? Let's imagine that that reality happened, you know? <laughs> and then when they stayed at home, well, what were they doing other than shopping, probably? <laughs> they were probably thinking about life, right? Because it was the first time that everybody was at home at the same time. So you got a be they got a better understanding to reflect, right? To kind of find out what their mortal life was was them to them you know what is it what are they worth to themselves so they're not going to sell themselves short at all it gets very difficult when you think about you know the gen z gen z where they haven't worked long enough to understand <laughs> this is where you get like that boomer clash because they haven't worked long enough and hard enough to understand what it feels like to work you know like they're brand new fetuses in the working industry basically in the work world basically but let's just imagine this pandemic happened and everybody was at home and they were thinking about what they wanted to do with their life and their future. Well, that's why they don't want to work for you again, because they're looking at every opportunity that they could have now as something that they would actually do. So do they want to tell you to fuck off and go work somewhere else? Sure. Why? Because everybody's doing it. There's, a, there's people are doing it. They finally have a, there's a, a way to just be, all be on the same team. Fuck work. <laughs> Done. And they're all just, sit, everybody's sitting at home. And they're thinking about, man, I really enjoy walking my dog three times a day. Or, man, I really got into gardening. Or, hey, check out this cookbook that I actually did every recipe in. Or, check out these books I read. Or, I learned another language. Or, I did some online courses. Or, I'm going to go back to school. But the last thing on their mind was whatever they hated doing, which was probably working for you. Okay? That's like... <laughs> and some of these people were in institutions that remote work was, left, you know, offered. Because it had, they had to work. I get that. But, like, using that as leverage now, hmm, nope, that ain't going to work either, right? Because all you're doing is you're just saying, we don't agree with this whole idea of working from home. But, you know, because everybody's doing it, we're going we're gonna to let you. And then, you know, somewhere in there navigate you back to the office because they want the culture back. Because the culture is Kool-Aid, the Kool-Aid is to be drunk, drank, and then there's actually control. 
you could go in a million ways here, but I totally understand why they would do that and they would start to actually use re remote work as leverage. Now, let's think about minimum wage, okay? Let's think about that for a second. So, and you don't have to Google to see that people feel it's like it's impossible to pay for anything and the inflation and the world is just expensive, especially if you live here in Toronto. So minimum wage doesn't cut it. So what are those jobs anyway, right? And the worst part about this is that automation is just fucking waiting, waiting for opportunities to like have any sort of argument against the flesh because it doesn't cost as much, it doesn't get sick, it doesn't argue. So it's like the more you want to ostracize, like this is where it's like you got to think about the future of work, okay? Because like if you look at it from the perspective of minimum wage, like I can go in many layers here why someone wouldn't want to work because it's like it's frustrating. It's like they also get to compare and contrast each other's lives with social media. So why would you, you know, work a minimum wage job that you don't feel justifies your worth or your value? Am I get? Am I right there? Am I getting somewhere? <laughs> I think I am. So now here's the other side, which I was just about to go down that rabbit hole, and that is with the automatic technologies and the automation, like say kiosks and automatic shopping, etc. Like if you're working in a retail institution and you don't already feel like you're getting pushed out, even though you're being paid minimum wage, now it's a little higher, but you're being paid minimum wage, you, you, I'm sure you can smell that that automated store is coming or all the automation is coming, right? And so the argument I always like to put out there for anti-work, you know, the against, or it's not exactly against, but I just have to say it both sides, is that large corporations are waiting to turn on as much automation as possible. The only reason why they're not doing that is because it would scare the shit out of everybody. So what they do is they slowly phase it in. So if you want to think that, you know, not working right now is like you can later on, if you say you need to work, like right now you're still in this whole phase of like sleeping off the pandemic. And now you're like, I don't want to work there, but you do need some sort of economy. What I'm saying is that those jobs the harder you push this concept of not working, the less jobs there will be, period. Because P the corporations will look at it as an opportunity to add more automation to the institution. And so these levels of jobs that are minimum wage will not exist faster. They will not exist faster. Do you understand what I'm saying? By like b this great resignation, the great exit or just being dissatisfied, when you leave that job, that position, if everybody leaves that position, those jobs may not be there for you to return to. Because the organization, the large enterprise organization has just been fucking waiting. <laughs> you know, just, just they're like, okay. So now we have nobody in our store. Turn it all on. Turn on all the automation. Turn on everything. Why? We still have to operate. We still need to run this business. And it was, we were just waiting to do this anyway. Like, we, they, they, way, to, way to go. <laughs> you know, like, you, you basically gave accelerated automation. And I'm going to tell you, years ago, I've been in conversations where I'm trying to figure out if everything was automated to the point where, you know, people are either they're, they're needed for uh, human work to make empathetic decisions with or without software. Like those positions are the ones that'll be the last, right? That, t that would be the last phase. But even if you were to do like maximum automation right now, finding jobs, and I don't mean just lowercase j, I actually mean even career for some of these individuals in certain fields and certain types of work, I can't even figure out what to what would be there. You know what I mean? Like I can't I can't figure out what titles of jobs would be that would include their skill set because everybody has a skill. I'm not denying that. Everybody does have a skill. I think over pandemic a lot of people found out more honed in on more of their skill because they had a lot of time and opportunity to do so. 
which also gave them the gall to like now give you the finger and not come to work. I mean, that's obviously too, and probably like getting together online and talking about, you know, problems and the future and their life, etc. Like this whole mutiny, you know, could have been predicted, but I'm just, I like to say that I'm trying to figure out a solution to at no one working at all in certain, you know, jobs as well. And it's tough. It really is because like these are maybe jobs that don't exist yet, but there is a lot to be said about upgrading, you know, like your knowledge, which I would, I, I have to say constantly is a, is a uphill battle, even with someone who owns the business because no one wants to learn anymore. So this upskilling is like, like what? Upskilling? How would you upskill the owner? How would you upskill the boss, <laughs> you know, in some sort of empathetic, you know, course so that they understand what it's like going through, what you're going through if you're a team member, we will call them employees, whatever. You can't just buy human time anymore. You can't just buy human time anymore. They won't work for you. Okay, I'm going cross messages all over the place. I'm trying to stay in the gray, <laughs> just, you know, just so I can actually have a conversation with both sides, right? Anyway, I digress. I'm going to tell you what I think the future entails, okay? I'm going to tell you what I think the future entails. It's going to be pretty awesome as long as everybody follows the same trends. That means adapt and evolve together, all right? And that's where everybody needs to understand that I get it, I get why you don't wanna work. It's people like myself get why you don't wanna work because it almost seems futile, right? It almost seems like why if, if you could see other things, right? The culture of the business sucks, so why be part of it? It's not the same thing. I would say that, you know, back in the day, Starbucks probably had a pretty good culture, maybe still does to, to a lot of people that work there. I totally get it. But has it degraded a little over time because of pandemic and people's understanding of what they actually want to do instead of what they have to do, right? Like, that's a big difference. So these opportunities that, pe that are there are like, there's so many opportunities, but it in includes everybody evolving together so that there isn't like this split right? Which is exactly what's going to happen. The more people don't want to work, the larger the gap. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And it's just, and, it, and, then, and then there's going to be no coming back. It's going to be like, it's going to, it's going to escalate to a new type of work level where it's like this new no work, which that's the one I don't know how to solve. That's the one I don't know how to solve, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to just say something that I think is really important that maybe a lot of business owners of certain age groups don't understand about social media and they don't understand about the person viewing the world through the internet, okay? There is 100%, I even experience it because of social media, the divide is based on freedom, okay? It's not money, it's time to do something that you wanna do. That's the, di that's the difference. Right? Not trading time for money doing something you don't want to do. That's like the, that's right there is the, that's why no one wants to work anymore. Because they look at their mortal life and they're not going to margin it anymore. They're not going to margin their mortality. And, and who do I have to thank for that? Well, Instagram for sure. <laughs> oh, I got to thank Instagram for that. Basically, Instagram was the first time where you could real time see other people, how they were doing, what they were doing in their life that isn't what you're doing. And if you would put a pandemic pressure cooker on that, well, guess what? Now they're going to not work. They're gonna leave because they look at what they're doing as not what they wanna do and there's no way you could attract them unless you figure out how to navigate these waters and evolve your business, evolve the protocols in your business, and involve the organizational culture. That's the solution. But if they're just there looking on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, I don't care, Facebook, bleh, whatever, right? That's like when you can see what other people are doing with their lives and compare and contrast real time your life. So if anything that I can say about this, you know, no one wants to work anymore, like 
the minute you put that, those social platforms in the palm of anybody that has opportunity to go do anything else than what they're, not, what they're doing that they don't like right now, they're going to fucking do it. Because we're all going to die. How hard is that to understand? We're all going to die. So work backwards, right? How much time do you have left? Right? What do you want to do with that time? And then that's when work gets real strange because a lot of older business, a lot of people, a lot of senior people in roles in business, they look like they didn't, it, like, was it worth it? Was it worth it? And so the youth see their life and they're like, I would never, ever cash my time for what that outcome is. I would never do that because that doesn't look like a happy ending. That looks like it was like a whole bunch of just arduous, hard, depressing, laborious, hated work. <laughs> I could probably throw in a few more descriptors in there, but that's, that's basically what it is. And so pulling the chute right now to co course correct your life, say if you're in your 20s, yep, yeah, going to do it, or your 30s, or even your 40s, right? You're going to do it. So we need to all evolve together or there's going to be a major divide. That's all I wanted to say. Now it's an open discussion to be had, but like navigating these waters right now, like I have a few inter interim solutions that I could probably suggest work. And it has to do with just making everybody understand a protocol on the same page. That's it. But I had to post a video about this because it's like all over the place. I see it and it's just, you know, so easy for me to understand what's going on. And it's not that easy for some of you out there to understand what's going on. And, it, and the thing about conver converting a mindset back, it's going to be impossible. It's going to be impossible. And then like added to that, like I could just keep going. I could talk forever. But added to that is like, say you do have a mass exodus. Say there is something that happens and you have a mass exodus from your business. Well, everybody that worked there is going to understand and know that the reason why that group or phase of team, staff, whatever, left was because the organizational culture sucked. Or it had something to do with why or how ineffective financially minimum wage is to the average person working minimum wage. Whatever that is, right? This is where the this is what I already see four C happening is well, you're going to try to rehire or hire more again. Phase out, they phased out, and you're going to phase in. What are you going to do about it? Because I'm going to be honest with you, if you don't change anything, the people that are coming back are the ones that know they can take advantage of the situation. They know that you didn't change anything or haven't changed anything. So they can just go into the institution, the organization, and just work until they don't feel like it anymore and just hop somewhere else. Or even just ghost. Now, do I agree with that? No. But do I think that that's what's going to uh, Would I believe that's going to happen? For sure. <laughs> so, like, if you notice a mass exodus and you don't change shit, and then you start onboarding, hiring people again, those people are going to take advantage of the, of the situation. Right? They're lo there's no loyalty at all. So change something, evolve, better organize your culture, get it together, man. Because I think it's, I think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And I, and this is the, this is the thing, everything pressure cooked time in the pandemic. In the COVID nineteen changed the world. I have had predictions of like the end of work and like automatic society for like a long time. And it's just it's, it, this quarantine, all it did was pull that line closer. It just pulls that freaking automation line so much closer to the workforce that like I don't even know what's going on. It's so fast, right? Invisibly fast in some places and, and actually very visibly fast in others, right? So that's what I wanted to post. I wanted to make sure that... <laughs> I'm on both sides, right? I'm on both sides. I get it both sides. I think it also has to do with my age. I think it also has to do with my experience, but I get it both sides, okay? I totally do. It's a difficult place to be um, higher, being the, the owner that, ha that wants to onboard team members, if you're forward, 
and then also being the team member that isn't getting what they want. Like they're not, the, the organizational culture sucks and they're not getting paid enough and why even have that job if automation is going to come anyway. And then also look on your phone and be like, everybody I know is having such a fucking better time than me. <laughs> I'm out.